Charles Thurston Hull was born on May 8, 1923, in Colfax, Washington, a small farming town in the southeastern side of the state. He was born to his parents, William and Florence, and was joined by a younger sister, Clarice, when Charles was three. The family remained in Colfax as William supported his family by working as an auto dealer. Curiously, Charles went by his middle name, Thurston, for the majority of his life. The name even appears in census documents as he is called Thurston from a very young age. In a 1929 newspaper article covering the wedding of his uncle, Charles is listed by the name of Thurston Hull when he served as a ring bearer. There are only a few sources on Hull's early life, but what is available tells a typically all-American story. Thurston was heavily involved in Boy Scouts and was a capable member. At 13, he received a second-class scout badge in his local troop. Later that year, in 1937, Hull began to make his mark when he started attending Colfax High School. Thurston's high school years began with excitement as he joined the football team as a freshman. The 1937 Colfax football team had a highly successful season as the Bulldogs defeated four conference opponents, capturing their first Whitman County football championship since 1925. Despite likely playing only a small role in his first season, Thurston was photographed with the rest of the team. Though he saw success in his first season, this proved to be the only year if Hull played football as he pursued a variety of other activities instead. He remained involved in sports as he was a part of the track team from his sophomore year onwards. Thurston's interests were varied as he was involved in different clubs for a year or two at a time. Among these were student council, band, science club, and stage electrician for the senior play. While Hull's interests seemed enigmatic, he did have one particular interest. In the class prophecy for a senior class, which predicted where students would be in 10 years, Thurston was listed as chief architect for the Boeing Company. Thurston's years at Colfax High School were a happy time in his life and he eventually graduated with the class of 1941. For this graduating class, life seemed calm and the future bright. Though the country was still mired in an economic depression and war raged in Asia and Europe, the economy showed improvement as the United States maintained neutrality. For Thurston himself, he looked to take the next step in his young life as he enrolled at the nearby Washington State College in the fall of 1941. Despite growing up in a nearby town and likely knowing some students in Pullman, Thurston didn't seem to pursue the WSC social scene. He was never mentioned in the yearbook or student newspaper and did not pledge to a fraternity. Instead, Thurston seemed to be focused on academics rather than socializing. Because of this, Thurston was remembered for his ability as a student despite only attending WSC for a single year. Majoring in mechanical engineering, he made an impression on WSC president E.O. Holland, as Holland later stated that Hull was a good student and a superior colored citizen. Given this report, Thurston was well on his way to earning his degree and contributing to society after graduation. However, the attack on Pearl Harbor occurred towards the end of his first semester and completely changed the trajectory of his life. With America now at war, the nation called upon everyone it could muster for the war effort. Though his future was promising, Thurston quickly dropped his education in favor of serving the country. On April 17, 1942, Thurston was mentioned in the Spokane Chronicle newspaper after he reported to Geiger Field for service in the Army Air Corps. With college on hold, Thurston was ready to depart for training. Despite not having any prior military experience, Hull's journey through the military progressed with remarkable speed. He left Washington on June 8th for pre-flight training at Santa Ana Army Air Base in Santa Ana, California. Within a month, it was reported that Thurston had qualified as a pilot cadet. Hull continued to be trained as a pilot within California as he moved to Visalia for primary training and Merced for basic training. After this series of moves, Thurston was sent to Roswell, New Mexico where he completed his training on March 10, 1943. With deployment nearing, Hull had one final opportunity to venture back home before he was sent overseas. He used a furlough to visit Colfax briefly before he returned to his unit. In June 1943, Thurston was sent to the European Theater of War to put his flying skills to the ultimate test. By 1943, the tide of the war was beginning to turn in favor of the Allies. While Germany had lost its offensive initiative, difficult fighting ahead remained as war planners looked for ways to steadily break the Nazi war machine. For this, 
air power was seen as an important asset in securing victory for the Allied forces. Once he had arrived in Europe, Hull joined the 566th Bomb Squadron of the 389th Bomb Group. Comprised of B-24 Liberator heavy bombers, the 566th had been active since December 1942. The squadron arrived in England in May 1943 and saw action in a variety of locations, such as Libya, Italy, and Austria. Thurston, who was the second lieutenant, saw action with the squadron, but the total number of missions he went on is unknown. In a letter written to his mother, Thurston reported that his plane suffered 15 hits from anti-aircraft fire during one particular mission. Nevertheless, an operation targeting the Ploesti oil fields in Romania was to be the key action taken by the unit. The 566th was scheduled to participate in the raid on August 1st, 1943. Ploiesti. Ploiesti. The name still makes us nervous. That's the kind of a target it was. 18 square miles of oil refineries. Tank farms. Marshalling yards. Boiler houses. Pipelines. And cracking plants. Processing more than 700,000 tons of crude oil a month. One third of all the oil feeding the Nazi war machine. And that meant lubricating oil, gun oil, gasoline, kerosene, diesel oil, paraffin, machine grease, aviation gasoline. The Nazis could make synthetic fuels, but lubricating oil has to come from natural petroleum. And one of the richest sources of natural petroleum was at Ploiesti. Obviously, the Hun was going to use everything he had in the book to defend these oil resources. Called Operation Tidal Wave, the raid on Ploesti consisted of a large force of 177 B-24 bombers. The planes flew low to the ground and carried time-delayed explosives, a bombing strategy that maximized their destructive potential but also made the bombers even more vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. Despite the danger, 167 B-24s were able to make it through the anti-aircraft fire and bomb the refineries. Ultimately, the raid proved to be as costly as it was inconsequential to the war effort. The raid failed to deal the critical blow to Nazi Germany as the damaged refineries were quickly repaired and began producing oil at an even greater rate than before. Though the Ploesti raid was celebrated in Allied propaganda, the losses were heavy. 54 planes were lost, costing the lives of 532 airmen. Despite the failure of the raid, the bravery of the airmen in the operation was without question. Five airmen were awarded the Medal of Honor, and five of the bomb groups received presidential unit citations. Sadly, this bravery came at a cost that was not immediately known back home. On August 14th, an article in the Spokane Chronicle newspaper reported that Thurston was missing in action. In a telegram sent by the War Department, Thurston's parents were initially informed that he had disappeared in the Middle East on August 1st. The family continued to await news on Thurston, only receiving clarification in the following month. A telegram sent by Brigadier General U.T. Ent, commander of the 9th Bomber Command, explained that Hull did not return from a mission over Romania, not the Middle East. He commended the actions of Hull and the other men involved in the raid as he wrote, I want you to know their gallantry, devotion to duty, and steadfastness of purpose in accomplishing the most difficult mission ever assigned to our air forces. Thurston's fate was at last reported a month later as his parents were informed that he was killed on August 1st, 1943. Details on his death arrived after the Romanian government provided information to the International Red Cross, which in turn reported it to the War Department. For his service in the raid, Thurston was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. The citation recounted the events of the raid as Hull bravely faced enemy fire as his damaged B-24 approached the targets. The report concluded by stating, The personal courage and zealous devotion to duty displayed by 2nd Lieutenant Hull on this occasion at the cost of his life, exemplified the highest traditions of military service and reflects a great credit upon himself, the 9th Air Force, and the United States Army Air Forces. Charles Thurston Hull was 20 years old at the time of his death. His body was recovered and laid to rest at the Colfax Cemetery in Colfax, Washington. In January 1944, students at Colfax High School dedicated a service flag in the honor of Hull and two other graduates of Colfax High School who had been killed in action. Decades later, 
Hull's name was added to the WSU Veterans Memorial alongside the many other students who gave their lives during World War II.